pastors, seminarians, and saints who came to the Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. Welcome. I am the moderator, Hong ki -chul. The words of the prophecy of Revelation and its fulfilled reality which is the last secret of the Bible, which must be known and kept, are being broadcasted live simultaneously in 12 languages through YouTube today. With the advantage that it can be listened freely from anywhere, there is much interest not only in Korea, but also around the world. As the words of Revelation, which used to be complicated, are now coming to them clearer in each lesson, the people from every corner of the world are deepening their understanding day by day and lifting up thanks and glory to our Father God who has given them all of this grace. Currently, the churches that have come to know the seminar from around the world, such as the United States, Canada, South Africa, Kenya, and Uganda, are signing MOUs with the Shincheonji Church. Media from 199 countries around the world also reported on this seminar and are making it a huge issue in the religious world around the globe. Today, we give thanks and glory to God who has granted us this precious word of life, and we will pray to God by gathering our hearts together. Father God, to whom we are thankful and grateful, today we give you thanks and glory for allowing us to have the Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, all around the world and for being together with us. The promised pastor of the New Testament, the chairman of Shincheonji, whom Jesus has sent for the churches as prophesied in Revelation 22 verse 16, together with the 12 tribe leaders who have learned from the promised pastor, are testifying the words of the prophecies of the entire book of Revelation and the reality that has been fulfilled. Last time, we learned the words on Revelation 20, and today, we will learn the words of Revelation chapter 21 through the tribe leader of John tribe. May you be with us, so that it will be a gathering that gives glory only to you, God. Please be with the John tribe leader who delivers the word, so that the words of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven of Revelation 21 can be clearly testified by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may you give much grace and love to all of the pastors, seminarians, and saints who are listening to the word, so that they can have a time of grace as they listen and understand your precious words and give glory to you. And we pray sincerely in the name of Jesus. Amen. Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. Continuing from last time on Revelation 20, today is the time to receive the testimony of the words of Revelation 21. Today, the one who will testify to God's word of life is the tribe leader, Yi ki of the John tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I hope that you will have great understanding when the prophecies and the realities of Revelation are testified in detail today, and that it will be a precious time when the light of truth shines on your hearts. Now, we will have the tribe leader, Yi ki who will deliver the word. Everyone, let's give a big round of applause. Hello. I am Lee Gi Wan, appointed in the name of John, the disciple of Jesus. Today, continuing from last time, I will give a lecture on Revelation chapter 21. Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. As we can see here, it is Revelation chapter 21, and the title is The Promised New Heaven and New Earth, Shincheonji. Before we get into the main reference, I will give you a brief summary on Revelation chapter 21. First, after the first heaven and first earth and the sea disappear, there is a new heaven and a new earth that is created. Second, it is written that the holy city, New Jerusalem, will come down to the new heaven and new earth, ending the death and bringing about eternal life. 
And third, it is written that the one who overcomes will be made the Son of God and will inherit God's inheritance. Now let's take a look at these one by one. First, we will read Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. You have read well. Now, if we look at the contents of Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 and 2, it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Also, it is recorded that the holy city, the new Jerusalem, is coming down out of heaven from God. Then what is the meaning of the first heaven and the first earth that disappear, and the new heaven and new earth that are recreated? First, let's take a look at the first heaven and first earth that disappear. This here means the heaven and the earth from the days of Moses. If we look at Exodus chapter 25 verses 8 and 9 and Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5, it says that Moses had seen the things of heaven and had made them on this earth in the same way. Then what were the things of heaven that Moses had seen? It was the city of Jerusalem in the spiritual realm. The city of Jerusalem in the spiritual realm is, in other words, heaven. It would be the first heaven. Moses had seen the city of Jerusalem in the spiritual realm, which are the things of the first heaven, and made it exactly in the same pattern on this earth. And this was the twelve tribes of physical Israel, the first earth, that is, the city of Jerusalem, here on this earth. He had seen the city of Jerusalem in heaven and made it on this earth. Therefore, the twelve tribes of physical Israel became the city of Jerusalem on this earth. However, these twelve tribes of physical Israel had broken the covenant that they made with God and worshipped Gentile gods. So the covenant with God was broken and God had left them. So since the city of physical Jerusalem had come to an end, now there was a reason to build a new Jerusalem. Now, about this new Jerusalem, Jesus had made a promise about it in the first coming, and this was shown well in John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. He said, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. This is what he had said. Jesus had fulfilled what was promised in the Old Testament and he departed to the spiritual realm from the earth. However, one of the reasons he went to the spiritual realm was so that he could prepare a place. And he said that he would come again when that place is prepared. And this place had meant the new heaven. Now let's take a look at the new heaven and the new earth that are newly created. The meaning of the new heaven that is created is first, the holy city, New Jerusalem, that was created by Jesus and the twelve disciples as the foundation. This is the new heaven. It's called as the new heaven to distinguish it from the first heaven from the time of Moses. In other words, this is the temple in the spiritual realm, the heaven in the spiritual realm that was created by Jesus and the twelve disciples. This is the holy city, the new Jerusalem, and this is also called as the new heaven. This is different from the first heaven from Moses' time, the city of Jerusalem. 
Now this new heaven that was created, the holy city, New Jerusalem, comes down from God is what it says. And Jesus had clearly said that He would come again when the place is prepared. So then, where will it come down to? The answer is in the Bible. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, Jesus said that it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the kingdom of God comes down to the heaven that was created on this earth according to what was seen in heaven. So if you go to the holy city, New Jerusalem, this heaven in the spiritual realm, the twelve disciples of Jesus are the foundation stones. Then in the same way, there must be a place on this earth created with the spiritual names of the twelve disciples of Jesus, correct? That place is where the twelve tribes of the new spiritual Israel are in Revelation 7. The place where there are the twelve tribes and the spiritual names of the twelve disciples of Jesus. This place is the new earth created on the last days. It is also the city of the new Jerusalem created on this earth according to the holy city, the new Jerusalem seen in heaven. It is called as a new earth to distinguish it from the first earth that was created at Moses' time. So the first heaven and the first earth from the time of Moses will disappear, and now a new heaven and a new earth will be created in the time of Revelation, and these two become one together. So everything since the beginning until now come to an end in Revelation 6. And from Revelation 7, there is a new creation. So until Revelation 6, everything is considered the previous era and it all comes to an end. Then in Revelation 7, God's kingdom is newly created. And just as the holy city, New Jerusalem, was created through Jesus, who is holy and pure, as well as the twelve disciples as the foundation stones, on this earth, the era before Revelation's time comes to an end and there is a new era, a new work that is created that will take place. So as believers, we must follow the word. The holy city, New Jerusalem, the new heaven comes down to the new spiritual Israel, the twelve tribes on this earth. And there is only one place in the world where there are the twelve tribes named after the twelve disciples of Jesus, and this place is only Shincheonji. Therefore, this becomes a reality that is made on this earth just as it is in heaven, and this is the 100% proof that this place is heaven. Dear all pastors, seminarians, and all saints, I hope that all of you will belong to the new earth and will all have the precious qualifications to live together with God so that we can receive the blessings. Next. It is said that there will no longer be any sea. The sea will disappear is what it says. So now, when people think of it from the viewpoint of the world, they think of the sea as actual bodies of water in the world. However, it is not talking about that literal sea. When you look at Daniel chapter 7 verse 3 and verse 13, it is written that the meaning of the sea is the world. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 3, four great beasts come out of the sea. And in verse 17, it is recorded that these are the four kings who will rise from the world. So the sea refers to the world. Also, if you go to Revelation 13, a destroyer called the seven-headed, ten-horned beast comes up from the sea. Then the sea refers to the world in which the destroyer resides or lives. So the meaning of the sea is the world, the destroyers, and it is also Babylon. So in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, they are known as Nicolaitans, and in chapter 13, as a seven-headed, ten-horned beast. And these are the realities in the last days. The beast with seven heads and the ten horns are the destroyers, Babylon. And when it says that there is no more sea, the Bible says that in the end, these destroyers and the world of the destroyers will be judged and it will be destroyed. And we need to know that this is truly done. Now continuing, 
When we take a look at verses 3 and 4 in the main reference, it is written, The tabernacle of God is with men. The tabernacle of God here refers to the holy city, the new Jerusalem, as we had seen in verses 1 and 2. We had learned about this before, correct? We have learned that this is the new heaven. And the twelve disciples who were created by Jesus, these twelve disciples are the foundation stones. It is a temple of the spiritual realm created by the twelve disciples, and it says that this kingdom is together with men. Now these people here refer to the people of God. The people of God are the 12 tribes named in the spiritual names of the 12 disciples of Jesus, the 12 tribes of Shinchenji, which are fulfilled here on this earth as they are in heaven. These are God's people. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 15, it is said that God will spread His tent over them. And these are the 144,000, the great multitude in white, of the 12 tribes of the new spiritual Israel. So now God's tabernacle, the holy city, New Jerusalem, will become one with God's people, the 12 tribes of Shinchanji, and the 12 tribes of the new spiritual Israel. So what happens when they become one? Something good would probably happen, right? The result of this is given in verse 4. What is the result of God's tabernacle being together with men? It says that death ends. There will be no more death. There will be no more crying and mourning and pain because all these things have passed away. It says that all of the first things have passed away. Since death is over, now eternal life is accomplished, correct? This is the work of God's restoration, the work of restoration. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, it says that God had left because of the sins of Adam and mankind, and they became flesh. Since God who is life had departed, death is in this world, and when we take a look at this, the lifespan of the people was reduced to 120 years, and death had reigned over the world. This was very different from God's intention and will. God, who had left, wanted to be all in all in the creation again. And these are the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 27 and 28. However, God, who is holy, could not live in this sinful world or with the people who was corrupted with sin. But now all of God's plan is being fulfilled, and in the last times, those who are born and harvested with God's seed will appear, and the 144,000 who are sealed, and the countless great multitude in white whose sins are forgiven by the blood of Jesus are created. God's people have been created on this earth, the 12 tribes of the new spiritual Israel, and so God can be together with these people. Therefore, God who had left will come back after 6,000 years, and God and the kingdom of heaven from the spiritual realm will be together with God's people. Death will come to an end, and eternal life will be accomplished. To all of our beloved members, the objective of believers is heaven and eternal life then these words must fulfill in us, correct? Therefore, I hope that we live our faith according to this word. In Revelation 7, it is written that only the 144,000 and the uncountable great multitude in white will be saved in the last days. And I hope that we all enter into this place, that is, into the new earth, so that we can be saved and receive all the blessings, that is, eternal life, so that it can be given to us and we can be together with God. This is what I pray for earnestly. Now let's read Revelation chapter 21, verses 5 and 6 together. He who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. You have read well. In verse 5 he says, I am making everything new. Then why does he have to make everything new? If it was clean and well-maintained, then it would not be necessary to make it new. 
So let's find out the reason why it is being made new. For the 6,000 years while God was away, all things became polluted and corrupted in the image and thoughts of Satan and completely changed for all these years. Originally, this creation was created by God, but they became dirty with Satan's image and thoughts. And that is why he said that he will heal all of these things into the image and likeness and the thoughts of God. And in verse 6, God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. And here he says that all the words that are written in the book of Revelation are done. Now you see the Alpha and the Omega here on the screen. This is the beginning and the end, the start and the finish, which means that God prophesizes and He fulfills. So God Himself had prophesied and He fulfilled everything according to His words today. And this is fulfilling God's work of restoration. In this way, He creates the world in which He reigns over and has eternal life for those who live together with Him. So in John chapter 19 verse 30, it said that all the prophecies of the Old Testament prophets were fulfilled by Jesus at that time. Likewise today, when we go to Revelation chapter 21 verse 6, we see that all the things that were prophesied in the New Testament are fulfilled today. What is spoken surely comes to pass. Furthermore, I want us to understand that all these things Jesus fulfilled at the time of the first coming, and so they will also be fulfilled today as well. And I hope we can understand this well. Now let's continue and read verse 7 together. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. You have read well. He who overcomes will inherit all this is what it says. It says that God will give his inheritance to the one who overcomes. And it says, I will be his God, and he will be my son. Who becomes a son? It is saying that the one who overcomes will be God's son. Then we must find this one who overcomes, correct? Then who is this one who overcomes? This Son of God who will inherit, this one who overcomes, does not fight with anyone to overcome. Should he fight with himself or fight with someone else, another person? It's not about that. But he must fight and overcome the entities that are promised in the Bible. So, in Revelation chapter 12 in the Bible, we see that the one who fought against and overcame the group of the dragon, which is the beast with seven heads and ten horns, he fights with the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony and overcomes. This is not a physical battle, but a spiritual battle between God's organization and that of Satan. So there is the one who overcomes, who appears, who fights with the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony until the point of death. And this person who overcomes here is the one who had fought and overcome the Nicolaitans in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. So the one who overcomes, who appears in Revelation chapters 2 and 3, receives the 12 blessings. This is the coming of the promised pastor whom Jesus had promised to give many blessings to if he overcomes. This was the promise of Jesus. And today, the chairman of Shincheonji, Chairman Lee Man Hee, is a promised pastor who had fought and overcome the Nicolaitans. The Bible had said that if you overcome, you'll receive the 12 blessings, and God had kept this promise. So among the 12 blessings, the first is the fruit of the tree of life. The second is the crown of life, and the third is not being hurt by the second death. The fourth is the hidden manna, and this one's very important, right? The words of the secrets of heaven, which had been hidden in parables and seven seals for 2,000 years, finally is opened when the time comes today, and now that word of revelation is given to one person to eat. And he is also given the white stone and the authority of the iron scepter. The morning star, this is Jesus, so the morning star is together with him, and it says he'll be dressed in white and will have his name written in the book of life 
and be a pillar in God's temple, meaning he is entrusted with a great duty. And it says that the name of God and of the holy city New Jerusalem and the new name of Jesus will be written on him to the one who overcomes, and that he will sit with Jesus on his throne. So the one who overcomes will have the food that leads to eternal life, the kingdom of heaven as well as the authority to judge. Therefore, in the last days, if we want to know this food of eternal life, the word of revelation, then we must meet the one who overcomes, who has received this word of revelation and has a hidden manna. We must go to him and receive this food of eternal life to eat of it. And right now, I see that all of you are eating it very well at this time. And so I hope that you will continue to listen to the words of this book of revelation in detail, not only now, but also in the future. Now let's take a look at verse 8 together. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. You have read well. In verse 8, the conclusion here is that there are people who enter into the second death. Then what is the second death? Let's take a look at this. Yes, the drawing here is very scary just to even look at. So the second death. The first death is the death of the body, of the flesh. And the second death is a punishment of hell that the spirit receives after the body dies. We believers have a hope in heaven. We must never receive this punishment of hell. However, when we look at the verse that we had just seen, the Bible talks about people who will enter the punishment of hell in such a way like this. The Bible is not kidding, right? So we must never take these words lightly. So who are those who enter into the second death? First, there are the cowardly, those who are afraid to believe in the reality. The unbelieving, are those who do not believe in the reality when these words are fulfilled. Now let's take a look. In verse 6, it was said, He said to me, it is done. So the words of the book of Revelation are fulfilled. Then the reality and the actual entities of the fulfillment appear. Since it is said to be fulfilled in verse 6, it means that there are realities and actual entities that have appeared. But the cowardly and the unbelieving are not referring to those who do not believe in Jesus, but those who are afraid to believe and do not believe in the reality that has been fulfilled. So those who do not believe in the reality like this will enter the second death, the lake of burning sulfur. The vial refers to those who do evil while claiming to believe in the Lord. The murderers refers to spiritual murder, those who make the saints stumble in their faith. Sexually immoral, those who have fellowship with demons, those who practice magic arts, those who practice false divination. The idolaters, they are the false pastors, the idols, those who serve the false pastors and the liars are those who testify with lies. So these people are said to enter the second death. And I hope that all of you, you and I, are those who believe in the reality by listening to these words, stand in the word of truth, and never go to hell. Now let's take a look at verses 9 through 10 together. Let's read. One of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the Spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. You have read well. It said here, one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the bride, the wife of the Lamb, is what it says over here. So again, there is a person who sees and hears. This is the new John in today's time. The angel said, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So who is the wife of the Lamb? Aren't you curious? Now in verse 10, 
This angel from the previous verse said, carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem. This is familiar, right? This is what we had seen in Revelation chapter 21 verse 2. And showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. So the holy city, Jerusalem here, is the holy city, the new Jerusalem, that we had seen in verses 1 and 2. Here the angel says that he will show this holy city, new Jerusalem, which is heaven. And what else did he say? Shall we see it again? He said, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So to put it all together, what is the wife of the Lamb? It refers to the holy city, Jerusalem. Then, why is the new Jerusalem expressed as the wife of the Lamb? We have already learned that the holy city, New Jerusalem, is a temple of the spiritual realm created through Jesus and the twelve disciples. And here it is said that the twelve disciples are the wives of the Lamb. They are His disciples, but why are they the wives of the Lamb? This is referring to it in the spiritual way. Jesus had the Word of God, and He gave the seed of the Word to His disciples. Therefore, the disciples are in the position of a woman who receives the seed from the man and gives birth to children. So having received the seed of the Word spiritually, the disciples are in the position of Jesus' wives. And that is why the disciples at the first coming were called as the wives of the Lamb because they are in that position, those spiritually who had received the seed of the word from Jesus. And the angel shows this holy city to John. So today, the angel shows it to the new John. Then, what is the purpose of the angel showing all of this to the new John? Is it for sightseeing? so that he can brag about what he had seen later on? That's not the case. This is to command him to create the holy city in the physical realm just as it is in the spiritual realm. So in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, it said, It will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it contains the meaning of choosing one person today, showing him the kingdom of heaven, and commanding him to create on this earth just as you have seen it. And we have learned this well in Revelation chapter 4, correct? The kingdom of God in the spiritual realm, there is one person who gets to see it today. In reality, this is the new John who sees it, and the purpose of showing this to the new John is to command him to create as he had seen. So there is something I want to say at this point. If someone created this on this earth as he had seen in heaven, then it would be the proof that he has seen the things of heaven, correct? He makes it accordingly because he had seen it. So if something is created on this earth accordingly, it is a proof that that place is heaven. Now, after reading verses 11 to 21, I will explain this using illustrations. Let's read. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length, and as wide and high as it is long. He measured its wall, and it was 144 cubits thick, by man's measurement, which the angel was using. The wall was made of jasper, and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth carnelian, 
the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of pure gold like transparent glass. You have read well. Looking at the appearance of the holy city New Jerusalem, it is like a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. And there are several different kinds of jewels appearing in the verses that we had just read. In reading these verses, many people may think, wow, if I go to heaven, there will be gold, there will be many precious stones, so in heaven, I'll have a big house made of precious stones. However, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual realm is an organization made of spirits and it's a kingdom of spirits. There isn't anything precious made of any stone at all over there. This is a parable. So the holy city in New Jerusalem that comes down from heaven is an organization of God, Jesus, the twelve disciples, and the martyred spirits. And I really hope that you will remember that this is an organization of spirits. And next, now what we had just read, let's take a look at this through an illustration. We see that there are twelve gates. So there are twelve gates in heaven, but it is said that the names of the twelve tribes are written on the twelve gates. And it is written, the twelve gates are twelve pearls. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is made of twelve gates, twelve pearls, and twelve tribes. And it is also said that there are twelve foundations. In order to build a house, there must be a foundation underneath, and it says that there are 12 foundations here. And you have seen all the 12 foundations in the verses that we have just read. But you should not think of these as real and literal precious stones. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 16, it compares God's word of truth to gold and to silver. Now regarding the twelve disciples, in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 4, Jesus is called as a precious living stone. In other words, Jesus is a jewel, He is a precious stone. And how are jewels? They're precious, they're valuable, and they do not change over time. Therefore, in the eyes of God, Jesus is such a precious person with the precious words of truth, so He is referred to as a jewel. When we speak of someone valuable, we may call that person as like a jewel or as a gem. And that is why Jesus was a jewel, the precious living stone. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it says, You too are like the precious living stones. The disciples had also received the words of truth, so they became jewels as well. In the eyes of God and Jesus, there are many stones in the world, but the twelve disciples were the precious stones. But what happened to them? They were called heresies while they were testifying to the word of God, and they were martyred, and eventually they ascended to heaven. Then since the people like jewels have ascended, in the eyes of God, it appears as if the jewels had come up. So now look here, the twelve disciples here became the foundations. So they are part of the foundation, these twelve foundations. And on top of that, a wall is built, and God's spiritual kingdom is constructed. And again, this is a parable. So the kingdom of heaven is the organization of spirits made up of Jesus, the twelve disciples, and the martyred spirits. Then, what was the purpose of showing all of this? It's because the kingdom of God is composed in this way, and it will come down as is. So on this earth, what should there be? There should be 12 gates, 12 pearls, and how many tribes? 12 tribes. Only when there are 12 tribes there can it give proof that this is the kingdom of heaven. So today, only Shincheonji has these 12 tribes, which were made in the name of the 12 disciples of Jesus. And this is the proof that this place is heaven. 12 pearls, and these pearls represent the words of truth, because they are like the gemstones. So in Shincheonji, 
The word of truth comes out from these 12 tribes. And as it says that each gate is made of a single pearl, although the word goes out from the 12 tribes, the pearls that come out of it are not different pearls, but it's one pearl, one word of truth. And why is this? It is because the 12 tribe leaders who became sealed by the promised pastor, who received and ate the scroll in Revelation chapter 10. He is like the spring and he teaches the same word of revelation. And these people then teach it to their saints. So the kingdom of heaven is made of the 12 gates, the 12 pearls, which are the 12 tribes and the 12 foundations, which refers to the 12 disciples. And this kingdom of the spiritual realm comes down to this earth. And the appearance is expressed in this way as well. The angel says that its length, width, and height are equal, and he brings a measuring rod of gold. And he measures heaven with this measuring rod of gold like this. And in chapter 21, verse 17, it says that the measurement that the angel was using Measuring the length is man's measurement. This means that the angel is commanding the one who sees the angel measuring in this way to go down to the earth and create it in the same way. Then the one who has actually seen it should come down to this earth and create the reality of the meanings just as he had seen it. So again, the angel measures heaven with the measuring rod of gold like this. And what is the holy city, New Jerusalem, measured in its equal length, width, and height? It looks kind of like this. This is the length, here is the width, and here is the height. And the length and width and height are all the same. So the length and the width are the same here as 12,000 stadia, and this was referring to the appearance of heaven. So here is the angel, the measuring rod of gold, and the angel is now measuring with this. And this here is called as heaven. But this heaven is made up of these 12 in total. Please follow me well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like this. So the lengths are equal, meaning that it is a cube. And this cube is made up of these 12 sides, and it is 12,000 stadia. The angel had showed this to one person, how he was measuring it. And the person who saw it creates it as is. How? Those sealed with God's name on this earth, with the word, there are 12,000 people, and there are 12 of them, 12 tribes. So a total of 144,000 people are created as a sealed people on this earth. And this is how it is created. Dear pastors, seminarians, and saints, where in the world is there a place like this that creates the 12 tribes and the sealed 144,000? There is absolutely no other place except for Shincheonji. No matter how much you do not like Shincheonji, if it is the only place that is made according to the words of the Bible, then you should think about this word at least once, and should also think that Shincheonji is truly a place that is created according to the words of the Bible. Exactly how it was seen is created here on this earth. And the word has fulfilled in this way. Now let's read verses 22 to 27 together. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You have read well. From here on, I'll walk through the verses together with you. It says, I did not see a temple in the city. He's been seeing it all so far, so why does he say that he didn't see it? 
Later in the verse it says, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. So God and Jesus are the temple. So again, because of the gold and silver appearing in the verses, people may think that there will be houses made of gold and silver when we go to heaven, but that is not the case. This was a parable. The jewel here refers to the word of truth as well as a person who has that word. Therefore, there is no longer a physical temple, but God and the Lamb become the temple. Next it says, the holy city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. The sun refers to a pastor and the moon an evangelist. The reason why there is no need for the pastor and evangelist to shine is because the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is its Lamb. Since God Himself speaks directly, why would there be any need for the light of a pastor or an evangelist? And in verse 24 it says, The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, it says a royal priesthood. So it means the pastors of the earth will come into the holy city with their glory. What would it mean to have one's own glory? Going to heaven myself would be the most important thing. So that is, the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it, and on no day will its gate ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The gates of the holy city, there are twelve of them. Since the twelve gates refer to the twelve tribes, it means that the physical and spiritual tribe leaders are always open, and that in the holy city there is no night, saying that there cannot be ignorance there, those without the word of God. And in verse 26, it says that the glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. And in verse 27, it says that nothing impure will ever enter, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful. Now it's important here, pay close attention everyone, only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life is what it says. These are the people who can enter. Then you must be written in the Book of Life, correct? Do you know the meaning of this Book of Life? If you have no idea what the Book of Life is, then it may mean that your name is not written there. The Book of Life refers to the registry of heaven, a book in which the names of the people who have life are recorded in there. That is the book of life. Therefore, those who are written in the book of life, if we talk about this life, according to John chapter 1, verse 4, it says, there is life in the word of God. So those who have the word of God, those who are the children of God, they are the reality of those who have life. In other words, those whose names are written in the book of life. If we are to check how important this book of life is, it is recorded six times. In Revelation chapter 3 verse 5, chapter 13 verse 8, chapter 17 verse 8, chapter 20 verse 12, chapter 20 verse 15, and chapter 21 verse 27. Now if we go to Revelation chapter 20 verses 12 and 15, it says that if the name is not written in the book of life, then that person will be thrown into the lake of fire. It means that they'll go to hell. So the book of life is not a matter of choice. Whether you're written or not, it's okay. If you are a believer, your name must be recorded in that book. But if you do not know what the book of life is, then you would not be able to be recorded in it. In the end, the reality of the book of life is, it is the registry of the church that is led by the one who overcomes, the promised pastor of God on this earth that church which is heaven. In other words, it is the registry of the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. This is the registry of heaven. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 12, it said that the books are opened, the 66 books of the Bible, and the book of life is also open. So God has the book of life. But when we take a look at this in Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, it says that the one who overcomes is together with the throne of God and Jesus. So let's take a look here. 
In God's right hand, on His side, there is the book of life. It is written that there are the books and there is the book of life. So for convenience, the book of life is drawn here on the right side. However, in Revelation chapter 3 verse 21, it says that the one who overcomes will sit on the throne of God and Jesus. So the book of life, which is together with God, will also be with the one who overcomes. And that is why, as you will see here, yes, the one who overcomes has the book of life. Because God and Jesus are together with the place that is led by the one who overcomes, what will this place be? It is heaven, and to go here then is to have my name written in the book of life. The name of the church that is led by the one who overcomes is Shincheonji. Therefore, the registry of the Shincheonji church becomes a reality of the book of life. Therefore, I sincerely hope that all of us will have our names written in the book of life and go to heaven without a single person who will be going to hell. Now, let's draw the conclusion for today. God, who had left at the time of Adam, returns to this earth after 6,000 years and accomplishes the work of restoration. God said that He would make a world of paradise on this earth where there is no more death. That place is a new heaven and new earth, Shincheon Shinji, which is Shincheonji in short. Therefore, I hope everyone can come to the kingdom of God and have the qualifications to live together with God forever. What would be the purpose of our faith, everyone? Is there anything else aside from heaven? We do not have faith in order to make money, right? It is not for fame or authority, isn't it? So our beloved pastors, seminarians, and all saints, if our purpose is to be in heaven, then I hope that we will walk on our faith life together, the path of our faith life in new heaven, new earth in Shincheonji, where the work of heaven is taking place. Second, the only person who has seen and heard the entire book of Revelation is the promised pastor whom Jesus had promised, and this is the new John. In reality, he is a chairman, Lee Man Hee, of Shincheonji. So just as there was someone who said, when I saw and I heard and then I looked, when Jesus was fulfilling the chapters one by one, there was someone who had seen and heard the events next to him. And that person has created the holy city, the new Jerusalem of the spiritual realm with the 12 gates or the 12 tribes exactly on this earth accordingly. And just as it was said that the length and the width are the same, He created the 144,000 on this earth. So the place created on this earth as seen in the spiritual realm is Shincheonji, where there are the 12 tribes. And this is the only place in the world like this. Where in the world is there a place named Shincheonji, a new heaven and a new earth? And where is a place called the Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony? And where can you find a place that have 144,000 who are seen? Today in Shincheonji, because a promised pastor has seen everything, he creates it on this earth exactly as he had seen. And this is the proof that this place is heaven, where God and Jesus are. Third, God and Jesus surely fulfill what they have prophesied. In Isaiah chapter 14, God even swears that He does so. Surely as I have planned, so it will be, and as I have purposed, so it will stand. So according to the word and the prophecy, the reality will surely appear. God said in Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 that we would not go to hell if we believe in this reality. So I hope that all of us believe in this reality that has appeared today and that we are all able to go to heaven. If you believe in Jesus, you must believe in the words of Jesus. If you believe in God, you must believe in the words of God. If the actual reality has appeared as what he had said, this is not something that can be done by a human being. So all of the 12 tribes that have appeared in Shincheonji today and all the works of this reality are not the works of any man. God and Jesus had promised, and now it is the time. They came to this earth today and they worked through a pastor. So God and Jesus are accomplishing everything. And so all of this reality belongs to God and Jesus. I hope that we all believe together and enter the kingdom of heaven. Lastly, I believe that we are all the same believers 
who hope for heaven and hope for eternal life. Are we not looking at the same God, the same Jesus, and the same Bible? So I hope that we do not fight, but we become one, so that we can all enter the kingdom of heaven and obtain the eternal life that we so long for. So I will shout, We are one, meaning that we are one in God and Jesus, and I will raise my finger as such. And I will appreciate it if you join together and raise your finger as well. Dear pastors, seminarians, and all of our beloved saints, let us all go to heaven. And I believe that we are one in God and in Jesus. We are one in God and in Jesus. We are one. Thank you. Now let's pray and we will end. The Most Holy Father God, I sincerely thank you for having us gather in front of your precious word today and for allowing us to hear this precious word of life. Today, just as you have made in heaven, your kingdom is being created on this earth, and the twelve tribes of the new spiritual Israel are created on this earth. You have said that you and Jesus would be here together in this place and accomplish the world of paradise where there is no more death, mourning, or pain pain, and it is happening according to that word. We all love you, God, and we love Jesus. So please, let us all come into your reality at this time. And please help us so that we will not fight, but we will all be one in the word, so that we become the believers who inherit salvation, heaven, and eternal life. Now, all we have is Revelation chapter 22 and the final lesson, the special lesson that is left. And so please help us all to receive this word until the end. And let us not stop there, but continue to learn your word more in detail so that we all become the believers who learn of your deepest will. I earnestly hope that you will grant us your abounding grace. And we pray with faith in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, thank you very much for listening throughout today. And we will end it here. He said that those who eat the fruit of the tree of life will have eternal life. And those who eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil will surely die. It is said that the tree of life bears 12 crops of fruit every month. Let us take a look at the reasons why all nations need to be healed through the leaves of the tree of life. Everyone, do you wish to receive eternal life? Or do you want to enter eternal punishment? Everyone, are you those in the city or are you those outside of the city? Are you those who added or took away from Revelation? Or are you those who did not add or take away from it? As you have seen in the preview, this coming Thursday, the tribe leader Yu Youngju of the Seoul James tribe will deliver the words of Revelation 22. The water of life as clear as crystal, which flows from the throne of God and of the Lamb, as well as the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit every month, appear in Revelation 22. And there is a record about the messenger of Jesus, whom Jesus sent for the churches. This is what many people around the world are curious about, and it is very important words that all believers must know. The time will be at 10 a.m., the same as today. I hope that all of you will attend and give glory to God and become a precious family that receives blessings. The reason that Shincheonji Church can testify of the words of Revelation with such confidence is because there is the promised pastor who has mastered not only the New Covenant Revelation, but also the prophecies in the four Gospels and their realities. In addition to the words of Revelation you heard today, if you have any further questions or inquiries about the Shincheonji Church and its doctrines, please contact the representative number of each tribe shown on the screen. We will kindly guide you in detail. And thanks to your support, the Shincheonji Revelation Seminar is receiving attention worldwide.
The slogan of We Are One, which is shouted together at the end of the lecture, and the words of Revelation of Shinchenji, is spreading and gaining popularity. I hope that everyone becomes a precious family of God who are united as one in peace, love, and truth in God and in Jesus. Also, you can re-watch today's video as well as all of the previous seminar videos you watched earlier through the official YouTube channel of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Now, we will end all of today's programs by giving the prayer of the Lord that has been taught to us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks and glory to our Father God for allowing the Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, and we will end it here. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.